And I know you know a lot of it. Most of you know this stuff fairly well. I just want you to hear the language, get back into the subject, and uh, start thinking of the, the overall picture of what's going on so you can gain this more global understanding. And Because uh, once you understand the math you're doing, then, boy, it takes a big load off you as far as learning other things. All right, so I'm going to uh, distribute over here. Minus 5 multiplies these two terms. So that gives me 4 bracket 3x minus 5x minus 5, close bracket, plus 7. All right. And, um, you know, we don't have to go necessarily, here's a dirty little secret, we don't necessarily have to go strictly by the order of operations. You know, there are times when we can... Um, make exceptions uh, that, that, that do make sense. And here it, it would be okay to multiply the 4 through the parentheses before you simplify in the parentheses. Mm -hmm. So we could do multiplication before simplifying inside the parentheses in this case. And so that, that would be an exception to our order of operations. Um, I just think it's a good idea to go ahead and finish simplifying these terms. Because when you start to multiply, then you create larger numbers, you create uh, more chances for errors. All right, so let's see, on the left side, I'm going to combine these terms. 3 minus 8 is negative 5 plus 2x. And on the right side, 4 bracket, I'll combine these terms. And I get 3x minus 5x is negative 2x minus this 5 plus 7. And now let's break open the bracket by distribution again. And so this gives me minus 5 plus 2x equals to negative 8x minus 20 plus 7. All right, so I multiply four times each of those terms. And uh, one other step here I could do, I'm going to simplify the right-hand side. So, let's see, minus 8x, and this is going to be a minus 13. Negative 20 plus 7 is minus 13. I want to make that uh, 8 a little more legible here. All right, so, um, now what have we done? We've, we've started with a problem, and we have done nothing but simplify each side separately. And so, you know, when, when you start to learn algebra, you learn two types of processes. You learn processes which simplify expressions, and then you learn processes which solve equations. And here we have used the simplification process on each side separately. It would have been okay to, for example, subtract 7 from both sides, or subtract 3 from both sides. That would have been okay. We Probably some other things we could have done. But um, I focused on simplifying each side to the point where um, I can make no more progress without trading things back and forth. So actually every linear equation will simplify down to this type of form um, where you have at least you have at most four items before you need to you know move from one side to the other. So um, I didn't explain what linear means, mm -hmm. linear equation. Well we'll do that a little bit later. But um, anyway, at this point, I want to uh, solve for x, so I'm going to isolate the x. I'm going to uh, choose to add 8x to both sides, plus 8x. And it gives me minus 5 plus 10x equals to negative 13. And I'm starting to run out of room, so I'm going to um, do a little racing. And you take it up to here. Okay, um, so let's see. Uh, I'm going to rewrite this. Minus 5 plus 10x equals negative 13. If you're wondering where this is coming from, I, I, uh, this is coming from my spare bedroom in my house where I've installed a 3 foot by 4 foot uh, whiteboard and um, the camera is against the opposite wall for me. So this is my own little studio. My computer is to the right and that's where I have the video feed coming in live. I can see on the screen what you're looking at. 
and later on I go through and I, I edit the video and um, so it's as short as I can make it and um, then uh, we'll go from there. So, uh, but unfortunately my, my board is not big enough. I'm going to have to erase once in a while in the middle of a problem. I don't like to do that, but that's the uh, constraint I'm under here. All right, so uh, now why did we subtract add 8x to both sides? Because that allowed us to cancel one of the terms. All right, so I have a single x term now, and I want to isolate it from the non-x term. So I have a minus 5 on the same side here. I'm going to now add 5 to both sides. And this cancels, giving me 10x equals to negative 8. And then let's uh, finish by solve, dividing by 10. So what's my answer? Um, this is going to cancel, leave me x. So x is going to equal to, and negative 8 tenths will simplify to negative 4 fifths. So there we go. There's our, there's our answer. Um, now then, so what, uh, let's kind of recap the, the process of solving, because this is so common with uh, what we do in algebra. Our first step was to simplify the problem. You know, use our various methods of combining terms together, combining like terms together, in order to um, get the shortest equation we can. And then we started moving things around from side to side. And what dictated that was, um, you know, the necessity of eliminating terms. So now here I have a negative 8x, and, and how do I get rid of it? I, I do the opposite. I, I add 8x. And here I had minus 5. What's the opposite of subtracting 5 is adding 5. And here 10 is multiplying x. And what's the opposite of multiplying by 10? It's dividing by 10. And so the process of solving is, uh, is both a simplifying process and then in a, a sort of reversal or, or undoing process where you reverse operations. And um, now I want to speak to that in a later chapter when we look at inverse functions. It, it, it's kind of a neat uh, perspective on this, on this whole mess here, looking at this as inverse functions. So that, that'll make sense when we get to it. Um, but another thing, just I, I would just like to point this out. I don't know if it's all that cosmic, but uh, the... Usually when you're solving, you're uh, very often, you are going in the opposite order from the order of operations. So for example, the last thing I did was, was divide. And before I divided, I added or subtracted. And so uh, anyway, just, just an observation. Uh, the process of solving is sometimes is, is working in reverse of the order of operations. Okay, now uh, one last issue here is how do you know it's right? All right, without looking up the answer in the back of the book. Well, you probably know that you can check answers to equations. So we can plug the numbers back in. And so if this is the correct answer, that means it solves this equation. Now, what does it mean to solve the equation? It means that it's, it's the number which balances both sides when I put it in. So I'm going to check this.